Hey guys, welcome to lesson two in this free mini course series on Smartsheet. Today, we're gonna to be covering what a Gantt chart is. And if you're unfamiliar with a Gantt chart, you might be thinking, Justin, what the heck is a Gantt chart? Well, today is your day for this lesson. And Gantt charts are used in all sorts of industries that involve project management. And if you haven't seen one yet already and you're involved in any sort of project management, sooner or later, you're gonna run into one. So today I'm gonna to simply explain how to set one up within Smartsheet. All right, let's dive into it. Hey guys, welcome to Workflow My Workload. I'm your guy Justin Arezio, and I'm super pumped to share this lesson with you guys today. And if you haven't yet already, I've created a free lesson, a full length lesson in the bio below that you can find. Uh, just click down in the bio below and you'll find it there. And along with that free lesson, you're also going to be getting some extra bonuses, some free extra bonuses of just some shortcut keys to utilize within Smartsheet to make your time more efficient. Because as we all know, if you haven't yet already learned this, that time is the best currency. So I want to free you up for more time so that you can do what you love and get done with what you need to get done with within Smartsheet. All right, let's dive into this lesson. And you may be wondering, okay, Justin, uh, why is a Gantt chart called a Gantt chart? Well, it was named after this guy, Mr. Gantt, who came up with this concept. And what a Gantt chart does is a Gantt chart measures the progress of a project over a set of time. And so, for instance, if you have a deadline, say the 30th of December, then you want everything to get done before you get to the 30th of December. So within that project, you may have three tasks, you may have 100 tasks. But within that timeline, within that project, you want to get all those tasks done. So by the time you get to the deadline date, everything is complete. And a Gantt chart in, in a very simple terminology just allows you to see the progress, to see how you're doing. If you're going to meet that deadline and what has not been accomplished and what has been accomplished within that time frame. And I know you, some of you may be thinking, okay, Justin, it's still really confusing. Don't worry, I'll take you by the hand and I'll show you how to do that in this lesson. All right, let's dive into it. All right, let's go ahead and create that Gantt chart. And the first place we're gonna to go to is the plus icon right here in this blue ribbon. I'm just gonna click it here. And then we're gonna actually go over here and click on Gantt for the Gantt chart. He's gonna ask us a name. Let's go ahead and uh, so we're say we're making some spaghetti here. We just got done making some marinara. Maybe we want a step-by-step -step process in making spaghetti noodles. All right, and as you can see here, <clears throat> we have the familiar spreadsheet information right here. But then over here, this is interesting. This is where, as we start building out the information and putting in the data here on the left, the Gantt chart is gonna start getting created right here automatically on the right. And which I'll go into in a few minutes, but you can actually um, manipulate and drag and drop the data over here on the right, just like you're doing over here on the left. All right, so let's go ahead and, uh, I don't have much real estate here. I want more room to type. So I'm gonna move my cursor until I see this symbol here, so from here to this, then I'm going to click and drag. I'm just going to move that over, do a little bit more. We'll get the side panel out of the way by clicking X right here. And now you can see all the components that are in the spreadsheet component right here. So you got task name, duration, start and finish date, <clears throat> predecessor, assigned to percent complete, status, and comments. Now you don't have to use all of these columns, um, but the two that you do have to use for sure are the start and, and, and finish date. So start and end date or start and finish date. Again, chart has to have at least two points of date data. Okay, so again, we're gonna just pretend like we're uh, 
putting together a little task schedule here for making spaghetti noodles. And I'm gonna go ahead and let's do collect ingredients. And let's do another one, we'll say make the dough. And the last one here, we'll do cook. So this is if we're making spaghetti noodles from scratch. And if you've never made spaghetti noodles from scratch, you get two for one today. You're gonna to learn actually how it's made and using the process through Smartsheet to do it. All right, so if you notice here, I made a space between each one. That's because I want these to be the the summary the the parent row if you will and in a lot of like Excel Smartsheet any type of project management that uses a workbook or uses spreadsheets um, a lot of times they use what's called parent rows and child rows so I'm going to collect the ingredients and that's the parent row and then everything below it could be collecting the ingredients the actual ingredients so I'm going to go ahead and right click right here and I'm going to do insert above. I'm gonna do it again. And let's do it one more time. That way I got some room in here. And then I'm gonna say flour, eggs, and oil, olive oil. All right, and I'm gonna click right here, and I'm gonna drag down, excuse me, click and drag. So all three of these are highlighted, and I'm gonna click this button right here. I'm gonna indent it in. And when I do that, watch what appears right here. Now we have this guy right here. So now I can collapse this and open this. And you might be saying, Justin, why is this so important? Well, trust me, it'll come into play here at, over here as we start building out the Gantt chart. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do the same thing for these other rows. I'll go quicker on these now that you know the process. Now let's get some color in here so we know uh, what we're doing and let's delete anything that is not needed. So we have an extra row here. I'm just going to go ahead and click here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to click delete. All right, let's add some color in here. This one will be orange. And you don't have to do color, obviously. I'm just doing this for visual purposes and for organization. take click I'm gonna click there hold the shift key and click down on my my arrows a couple times and make these light orange and do the same with the rest of these click hold the shift key and then down on the arrow key I'll highlight the entire row do a light brown and then we're gonna go ahead and do green and as you notice here, while I'm doing this, drag this back over, is it's the colors are carrying over into the Gantt chart. And there's a reason for that. And as you start building this out, you're going to see why, and it is very helpful. All right, so we're starting to build the information here. Now let's start working with these other columns here before we move on 
to the chart creation on the right because you have to start with this first before you can start with the chart creation. All right, let's go ahead and put some dates in here. Um, again, obviously it doesn't take days to do these things, but for this example, we're gonna go ahead and throw in some dates here. So we'll do, now see, I just picked the date right here, and what it did is it automatically did the math for me. It said, okay, it's gonna take at least one day, and the parent row, the dark orange, is also doing a summary. So right now, this is one day and this is one day because there's only one option. But watch what happens up here in the dark orange when I start adding more days for the eggs and the olive oil. So maybe starts here and so it goes all the way to the 23rd. And for olive oil, maybe instead of the 23rd, it'll start on Monday the 26th and it goes all the way to the 28th. So a couple things happened here. First off, it did the math and it added the days for us. And then at the top here, it gave us the total summary. So three plus three is six, three plus one, six plus one is seven, so we have seven, three, three, one, seven. And then over here, at the same time, the Gantt chart on the right was created for us. So what's really cool about this is the information on the left, um, row, let's just say row number two, is carrying over all the way, literally into the Gantt chart itself. It's all flowing together. And so watch what happens at the bar right here when I change the date. See how that extended? It went all the way out. And I'll go and go back. And as you notice here in the dark orange, the dark orange in the chart is also a summary of all of these bars put together. So and that's very, very helpful. And what's cool is these bars are, um, you can do things with, with these bars that are interactive. And so you, you can move your cursor to the right to move it. You have the arrows right here. So I'm just gonna click and drag, drag it all the way out if you want. And when you do that, it automatically did the math here. See how it added the days for me, changed the date, and it updated the summary. I can go back. If I wanna um, click and drag in the corner, I can move the predecessor to the next task. And I can do it from the top as well. And if you wanna change these colors, you just click into the bar and then you right click color settings and then you can you can choose your color let's go and click save and i'm going to throw in some dummy data here really fast for the rest of these so we have something to work with here Alright, got some dates in there. And see, I didn't have to worry about the days. It automatically did the math for me. And the parent row, which I colored the dark color for each respected color, is automatically doing the math for me. And we move our mouse over here. We can see our Gantt charts that got created. Alright, so say instead of trying to click and drag and connect these, like this, and how do I how do I connect these? How do I how do I move these? Um, or excuse me, how do I connect these without having to click and drag each time? Well, that's what the predecessor is for. And so all the predecessor means is you'd simply put in the number of the row. So you're putting in the row number that you want this piece to be connected to. So for instance, I have olive oil here. If I want olive oil to be connected to flour, then in the olive oil right here, let me delete this. And olive oil, I'm going to put in row number two because flour is in two. So if I want to click olive oil to flour, then I'm going to put row number two because this is the row that it's in. So I'll put two, click enter, and then you see that it cut right through and it's all it went straight from flour to olive oil. But because I want to do a step by step process, I'm going to go flour, egg, olive oil. So let's go ahead and delete this. So the first one here, since it's the very beginning, it has nothing um, 
preceding it. It has nothing before it, so we're just going to leave it blank. Next row, row number three, is our eggs. And for right here, I want it to connect to the one above it called flower, which is row number two. So let's put a two here. And then for olive oil, I want olive oil to be connected to eggs. Eggs is row number three, so I'm going to put a three. Click enter. And as you see here, see the arrows? It's connecting it's to its predecessor. And you can actually skip down to all these other steps and make all of this connect together. So I can click here for make into a ball. And I want to connect to the one before it, which is way up here, which is row number four. So I want make into a ball to connect to olive oil, which is row number four. So let's put four right here. And that's it. That's, that's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm going to start building this out. So I want need, need the dough. It's going to connect to the one before it, which is seven, row number seven. So I'll put a seven. I'm going to finish the rest of these here. You can drag and drop too if, if they're stacked. If you drag and drop, it does it for you as well, and it some connects them together for you. Excuse me there. All right, so if I drag this over, you see everything connected. There it is. And again, you can manipulate this data. You can move it around, and it's saying, hey, when you drag and drop and move stuff around like that, everything before it um, will be broken. It won't have that connecting piece. So all we got to do is just connect it again, enter, and there we go. Now watch these columns pretty self-explanatory. You can assign it to people so they know what their task is. You can put in the number of complete, like maybe we're 50% complete on here, and then we're at 25% complete on here. And as you notice here, it does the total for us. And if I do 25% here, and it's only going to add up to being 29%. But if this was 100, and this was 100, but I left that at 25, we're only 68%. If this was 95%, we're almost there, but not quite. we got to get to the full 100. All right, we're complete with this task. And again, you can drag and drop this little divider here. And if you're ever curious, like, what's today's date, this is what this dotted line right here is for. It shows you today's date. So today is, what is today? Today is December 20th, so December 20th, which is a Tuesday. Between Monday and Tuesday, it falls right here. And that is the basics um, of Gantt charts. There's more details um, to be explored, but I don't want to spend that time um, today on this video. That can be in another video. But keep an eye out for the next lesson in this quick mini series of Smartsheet. All right, you guys, take care and God bless.